Coming up now on Animal Outtakes, conserving species. A group of the smallest, rarest, and most endangered sea turtles are heading back home. We visit Moat Marine Laboratory in Sarasota to witness their final checkup before being cleared for takeoff. It's an amazing day. It's a day we wait for, right? So the minute we know we're getting animals and the minute they come in here, our goal is to get them back out there into the wild. So we're all pretty excited. Plus a unique experience, a target training session with the manatees at Moat Marine Aquarium. See how these gentle giants are kept calm during routine medical tests. And later in the show, we meet Pico and Salsa and find out how and why these sharks can get themselves into a stretcher. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outtakes. When exposed to cold water for long periods of time, sea turtles can become cold stunned. It's a hypothermic reaction that can cause the reptiles to become weak and inactive. And it could be fatal. We recently visited the turtle hospital at Moat Marine Laboratory, where they're able to rehabilitate cold stunned turtles back to health. 12 Kemp's Ridley's arrived from Massachusetts on a flight with Turtles Fly 2. And we are happy to report several have officially gotten their clean bill of health thanks to the hard work and compassion of those at Moat Marine. Let's take a look. Kemp's Ridley, which is a species, is the smallest the rarest and the most endangered, critically endangered species that we have around. They are seen out here in the Gulf of Mexico. They're uh, just very unique in their behavior in captivity and out there in the wild. So we really enjoy um, helping uh, put these animals back and help with the conservation of the species. So who's with who, Ashlyn? Do we have, I need a Beth, I need uh, Jamie, I need Casey, Rip and Tate. You got it? Okay, Ms. Beth will be first. Right now you're in our sea turtle hospital at Moat Marine Laboratory and we take in all injured and sick sea turtles in Sarasota and Manatee County area. We actually help out our partners in other areas as well and today you got to watch a group of New England sea turtles that were flown down by Turtles Flight 2 and uh, we're part of their ending of their rehab process. All right, Miss Beth, so we are going to take names off. So you may want to chart where who, where everybody is, is, okay? Okay, so we're gonna scrape that off. So we're gonna give her her pit tag now. I know you're gonna love this. You are a little jewelry. These guys are pretty docile, but if you can imagine, our big loggerheads wanna reach around and chomp you. Oh, I'm sorry, here you go. Good. All right, before any of our sea turtles get released, um, we want to make sure out there um, that we can monitor and know who they are, if they restrand or if they're found. Most animals, most sea turtles will get flipper tags and a pit tag. It's a little tag if they restrand or are found. You can scan, you do that in your dog, so your cats so will know their identification. These guys are too small for the flipper tag, so they just get that pit tag, but it helps us identify them if they were ever to restrand or, or, or be found in, in, in any, any other way. I think I'm gonna have, oh, she says this scratch me. She said yes, thank you. All right, let's little friend get a final weight on you. Hi. Hi, I see you got a little frostbit nose still. Come on. Their initial triage is up in New England, right? So volunteers gather up these animals that are frozen on the beach, they bring them in, triage them, send them to in New England, and once they're stable enough to be flown, they're flown to all other, you know, a whole bunch of different facilities that participate in this recovery effort. So we received 12 at the beginning of January, 
And really, this group had done really well um, up there. They, and for us, once they got here, initial assessment, a few had um, secondary pneumonias, which is very common. Um, a lot of them, actually all of them were on antibiotics, and we slowly got to wean them off, make them gain weight, and just come back to be a turtle. So this is the radiograph of Carter, who we just did, and you're getting to see these finger-like projections, like his ribs, right? And so we're looking at the lung space on each side to make sure it's not still congested and that he still doesn't have pneumonia. Right. And it's looking beautiful, but we'll send that to the veterinarians to determine. Okay, before Miss Beth goes in, you want to go grab a friend out of her yeah. tank and then I'll bring her over. The ones that are going tomorrow have gained weight, have been off of antibiotics for two weeks and have been cleared of all other ailments. So ready, ready, ready and willing to go. Hi, all right, let's go put you back and go get a friend. It happens every year and it seems to be getting more and more intense. So I can remember back in the 2000s, yes, we were still getting them. It's a really interesting geography up there where they all get stuck up there in Massachusetts, right? So it's like a hook. So it's not just sea turtles, it's other animals that get caught up there. So it's been happening for, for a long time and it's just um, the sea turtle group has really bonded together and uh, um, support each other and the species and just come together and it's a wonderful experience and um, we, we love participating. These are part of the same stranding event and all came down together, but they're not cleared to be released. So out of the 12, we have five going tomorrow, and the other seven are still remaining here under care. Miss Jess, Miss Jess, Miss Jess, Miss Jess, I need a head holder. Little Chief. He's a little head. Yeah. He's my fave. Chief is? Yeah. I just was looking at numbers, and this year up in Massachusetts, they almost hit 800 that hit their beaches. Um, and it usually starts at the middle of November, um, and then by the end of December, everything's coming in dead. So it depends how severe, how fast they could get to these animals. This year, our group that we got, um, I feel like New England has it down to a fine science. They were in really good shape, um, you know, besides the normal rigmarole with pneumonias um, and a little bit of a fungal infection. They were in excellent shape. They were taken. Uh, very good care of and there's a wonderful group called Turtles Fly 2 that works with them up there and they work with all the rehab groups and they volunteer all their time to fly these turtles, hundreds of turtles, to other facilities all around the country um, which I think is amazing and all these efforts couldn't happen without the whole group of people. Thinking we're getting close to our thousandth uh, turtle so we need, to, we need to, yeah we need to look, yeah we were in the high 800s and so it really varies on how many animals we get in from year to year. You know, um, we are approaching on our thousand animal in-house, so for us that's a really nice milestone, but that's not including all the thousands of hatchlings we do every summer. So we do at least 2,000 um, animal hatchlings during nesting season that come through our hospitals that, that we try and nurture back to health or get, um, dis they get um, distracted by people's lights and they end up in their pool or their parking lot. So we do aid in the, that effort as well. So I hate to say we've just done a thousand. A thousand is amazing, but again, one in a thousand make it to adulthood. So every every animal matters, every sea turtle matters. Look at your noses still. Got a little frostbite still. Oh, he says I just fit in here. All right, come on little friend. Oh, he said 3.0, 3.0. All right, he is the last of that tank? Yeah, okay. that's tank B. All right, here you go, for you. That was Casey. Oh, little Tate, here you go. Yeah, so it's all Yellowstone. <laughs> that was our theme this year, so you have to watch Yellowstone. All right, last friend. Hi. <laughs> Barely fit, Miss Lynn. I'm barely fit. 2.85. We're gonna hold off his slipper for a second. Mm -hmm. Come here, bud. Good job, buddy. 
we look at these animals as an indication of our health of our oceans. Um, so they're a great indica indicator species. Um, and so it tells us a lot about the health and dynamics that's going on out here in our own environment. Five turtles were successfully sent on their way off Ormond Beach. The remaining ones are still receiving care and will be released on a future date. For updates on the sea turtles in Moat Marines Care, you can log on to their website at moat.org and click on the Animal Hospital tab. Coming up next on Animal Outtakes, we're tankside with the manatees at Moat Marine Aquarium, where we witness quite a calming process. Find out how target training can be vital to the health of these gentle marine giants. That's next. Good morning, Mr. Benson. Your breakfast is served. <sighs> Time for another day in doggy paradise. I sure am one lucky pup. Mr. Benson, would you like to go out for your morning stroll? The weather is quite lovely today. That sounds wonderful. Don't mind if I do. After all that exercise, I think I'd like to lounge by the pool and maybe dip my paws in. As you wish, sir. Right this way. Ah, what a perfect day. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else but Dante's Den while Mom and Dad are away. At Dante's Den, we pride ourselves in providing the best experience for your beloved pup. Whether it be a day, a month, or a year, Dante's Den should always be at the top of your list for boarding. With an expansive campus, your dog will enjoy daily walks, pool time, and an endless supply of love. Even better, it's all under 24-7 supervision from our wonderful staff. If you're anything like us, your dog's safety and happiness come first. To learn more about Dante's Den, visit dantesden.org. Most of us don't really like going to the doctor, especially if you have to get poked with a needle or two. The same can probably be said for animals. But as a part of the routine care at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium, it's all part of the job. And one of the more basic tools they use with some of their animals is called a target. Keepers. The purpose of target training with all animals is going to be so we can take the best possible care of them. So we do have two animals in this exhibit, so you can imagine if they both want to eat all the food in one spot, or if we need to work with one and not the others, they all want to be involved. So by having them each have their own target, we can separate them, we can ensure that they get all of the food that they need for the day, as well as all their training food, and teach them all of the behaviors that we need to do for potential uh, things like voluntary blood draws or other veterinary care procedures. Specifically for our manatees, you can see here we have their targets. So we do have two of them. Now targets is a very basic tool we use, but you can think of them like name tags. So this black one is going to be for Buffett and the white and blue one is going to be for Hugh. So wherever we put these in the tanks, we're asking them to come over sit nice and calm at them. So just like if you have a spot at the dinner table or maybe a sign seat at school, that's what we're asking them to do, sit nice and calm. And then if they do that, they're gonna get a reward. So for our manatees, their reward is going to be a nice sweet snack. We have some greens over here, so some collard greens, some kale. So there are carrots, beets, squash, and then even these fun little biscuits. We call them monkey biscuits, they are made for primates but they're nice and sugary and the manatees really love it. So this position here we call ventral. So you can see he is presenting his stomach or his ventral side. And this allows us to hold them a little bit longer for longer procedures and have access to their pec fin, which is where we're gonna do our pretend blood straw. All right, Michelle, you're good to come over. Do you wanna see? We train our manatees here at Moat at least twice a day. We do a session in the morning and one in the afternoon. Now, if there's something we would have to do that might be a bigger procedure where we need more people, we might be doing one big session in the morning or in the afternoon, or if we need to add little sessions in there to work on certain behaviors, we can also do that as well. Nice and calm on your side? Yeah. Good. With the manatees, I feel like they're reacting more to the shapes and the sounds that they're hearing um, and their targets are what's in their tank. They don't have the best vision, so their eyes are about as good as a legally blind human. 
So they're not really focusing on that vision, but it's gonna be more of that tactile or those things around them. So they do have little hairs all over their body that can actually feel what's kind of moving around them. So they're definitely gonna know when we're in the water. Divers, they do interact with us when we're in there um, diving to clean the tank. But they definitely can tell, I feel like, these blue shirts, very distinctive, or like where we're standing. They can see shapes of people and they get excited because we usually toss their food in or do training sessions from this side. Good job, buddy. I have big hands, you have big handfuls today. So drawing blood on any animal is definitely gonna be a task that's gonna take a long time to train. So not many people like going to the doctor and getting their blood drawn. Uh, so for our manatees, you can imagine, they are both very large. So he weighs about 1,300 pounds and Buffett weighs about 1,800 pounds. So if they don't wanna do something, this is voluntary, they don't have to. So we break down the behavior into the most basic steps possible. So the first thing they're gonna learn is what position do we want them to be in? So for them, we're actually gonna have them rolled on their back with their pec fin up so that we can actually hold it and support them. And then we're gonna start practicing uh, touching it. So that's something they're not used to. And then we're gonna add in a gauze that we're just gonna prep it. So just like when you go to the doctor for your blood draw, they do a little alcohol on your arm. So we'll do an alcohol, um, pretend, and we'll do our six preps, and then we'll actually go back into more fields. And then eventually when they're comfortable with all of those steps, they're not um, wanting to leave, or you can kind of feel, you'll hear us say they're tensing. You can feel those muscles kind of flexing. So that's gonna tell us that they're nervous or that they don't like it. So once they don't do any reaction like that, we're gonna go into that, that pretend stick. So we can use a paper clip or something else that's a little pokey, but not a needle. And we're gonna pretend like we're doing that um, injection or that initial um, insertion of the needle to mimic or pretend what we would do in a real situation. So in all of that, our training is positive reinforcement. So if they do what we want them to do, so stay nice and calm, not reacting, um, we're gonna give them food. So those snacks we talked about earlier, if they're doing what we ask them to do, they're gonna get food, so they're hopefully gonna keep doing those behavior, and the chances of that behavior are going to increase as we continue the training. So definitely a long process. They have been here since 1996, and I believe that this training was started right away when they came into our care here at Moat Aquarium. Everything is fashioned for them as, and whatever's easiest for us, so it's positive because in the end, this is gonna make those procedures a lot easier and safer for us as well as the animals. So when we give them a large amount of food, that's something in the training world we're gonna call a jackpot, signifying what you just did was really good. So he held nice and calm when we did that simulated blood draw or that pretend stick. So we gave him a little bit extra food to tell him that he did a really good job. Good job, Buff. End him here and it's ventral. How you doing, Melanie? So then to tell them we're all done, we're gonna get a handful of food, pull their target out, and two taps. So that's gonna tell them good job. We're all done with our session, and there's no more training food available. We're complete. Stick around, there's more animal outtakes coming up after the break. Welcome back. Now we continue our learning adventure at Moat Marine Aquarium. In this outdoor classroom segment, we meet a couple of nurse sharks, Pico and Salsa. As a species, these carnivores have the ability to stay still. And because of that, Biologists at Moat have been able to teach these animals how to load themselves onto a stretcher. And they show us they are anything but spicy. Hi, Salsa. Oh, you get it? What a good girl. 
All right, I'm gonna take station target out. This is her T-pull, so she's gonna follow this target over to our stretcher. Give her a piece to reward for coming over. Grab one more. And we're moving. So target training is one of the ways that we can ensure that all of our animals, not just sharks, um, get their proper amount of food and their vitamins. Um, we can also take a really good look at them to see how their body condition is, um, see if they're healthy, if there's anything wrong. Um, we can catch it a little bit faster. Um, with our nurse sharks in particular, um, the training, since they're so mobile, um, nurse sharks are one of the species of sharks that can actually stop moving um, and continually breathe so we can do the stretcher training with them. Other species of shark like our sandbars and black nose, they have to continually swim in order to continue uh, to breathe. So just the target with them is great. Oh salsa. Yep, so sometimes this happens. They get a little confused as what's going on. So we just kind of wait, see what they're gonna do. I can call her back. Not the right shark, but that's okay. Hi. Hi, Pico. There we go. Can we come in? What a good girl. Whoop. All right, so now we're in our stretcher. Gotta grab more food. Yeah, it's very um, interesting and amazing that we can actually train sharks. Um, so Moat was founded in 1955 by Dr. Eugenie Clark, and she was one of the first to document that sharks can be trained, um, and they have the same relative intelligence as a mouse or a rabbit. So we're doing stretcher training right now. So Ma'am, you have this stuck in your mouse. You need to get that out. There we go. Um, stretcher training is great for um, any husbandry related um, things that we need to do with them. So we can look them over, look at their body condition, make sure they're looking healthy, any scrapes we can catch pretty quickly. Um, we can also do measurements on them. We can take their weight as well. Along with stretcher training while they're in here, we can also do tactile. So that gets them used to us um, touching them on either their pec fins, their dorsal fins along their side. Because again, we might have to do some like blood draws. Um, when we measure and weigh them, um, you know, we have like a measuring tape. So we get them comfortable with us touching them. Both Salsa and Pico, um, age-wise they're about 10 years old. Um, and we've recently measured salsa and I want to say she was like six feet three inches somewhere around there um, she'll get a little bit lo longer than that um, weight wise she was only like 150 but again she'll get bigger um, 10 years old is still pretty young she is doing some um, kind of station training and then a, that pole is her target pole so that one she can move around easily. Let's see if we'll, we can get that. So if we need to move them from one section to another, um, they just follow that target and it just makes it really easy to move them. Here's your last piece, ma'am. You did so good. This is the tricky part. She loves it so much, she doesn't wanna leave. Oh, we're gonna leave today? No? Yep. yep. <laughs> Come on. Any type of training with any of our animals, um, it's great enrichment for them. It kind of keeps them thinking, their mind act active, because sometimes they can just be sitting there all day. We want to get them moving, um, using their brains a little bit more. Okay. She doesn't want to leave, so that's okay. <laughs> it's totally fine. They can do whatever they want. It's voluntary. We'll ask them to do something if they decide not to. That's all right. They're still going to get a reward anyways. Yeah, I don't like leaving hammocks either. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, 
visit our website, dantesden.org. We hope you had fun and learned a thing or two along the way. We'll be back here again next week with even more animals and some wild adventures. Until then, thanks for watching.